plenty of rumors, quack scientists, and internet articles are out there saying Atlantis is this or it's that. And today, we're going to take a look into what exactly is Atlantis. What do we know? Did it exist? Is Aquaman underrated? We'll be getting to the ocean bottom of all of this and more. Let's get to it. Number 11. Atlantis was destroyed in one day. Across the world, almost every culture you find will have a myth about a massive flood. It's well known to scientists now that these great flood stories come from a time of sea level rise. We all know that just a bit of sea level rise today would sink much of Manhattan's financial district, portions of LA, and forget about Miami. Might as well call Miami Atlantis 2.0. So this flooding was happening at a much larger scale in the past, and you can imagine what happened to all the people living near the coast. One researcher made a map of the Mediterranean with a dot on all of the drowned cities. The thing looks like it has chicken pox. Divers still find new artifacts all the time. Not that they're from Atlantis, but it just proves that it wasn't the first or the last city to go under. From what we know about the last of these great floods, the force in some areas was so devastating that New York City would be flattened in minutes had it stood in the way. Take Dry Falls in Washington State, for example. At one time, it was five times bigger than Niagara Falls with 10 times more water flow than every river on the planet combined. It destroyed everything in its way, then just dried up like nothing happened. If Atlantis was in the path of something like that, well, it's not anymore. Number 10. The first known historical texts that describe Atlantis by name are the documents Timaeus and Critias, written by Plato, of ancient Greek and Hasbro fame. Inside, we find a mysterious account from Plato's ancestor, Solon. Also well known and respected in ancient Greece, Solon, in no uncertain terms, describes the tale of Atlantis upon hearing about it from the pharaoh and his priest during a trip to Egypt. These kings of Egypt told Solon that Egypt itself was created with help from the Atlanteans. A great architect they call Amun-Ra survived the Atlantean disaster and was said to be the one with the knowledge to build Egypt's great temples, pyramids, and culture. Archaeologists have in fact noticed that each successive generation since the first dynasties of Egypt had actually seen a decline in the all-around greatness of the renowned empire. Critics can dismiss this account to be a story or an analogy for some other purpose, but this dude was serious. You won't find any spot in Plato's books that hint that he was making it up. Number 9. How did Atlantis kick the bucket? Solon, in Plato's writing, was told a specific date when Atlantis had fallen, which was 9,000 years before his time. Solon was alive around 600 BC and places the fall of Atlantis conveniently at the end of the previous ice age, during which continent-sized amounts of dry land were covered with a surge of meltwater from thawing ice reserves around the planet. Number eight. The legend is worldwide. Atlantis is the name that everyone knows, a very Greek sounding name, but there are extant writings and stories from several cultures that describe a very similar place in their own tongue. In Japan, there are stories of underwater Yonaguni structures and similar reports from native communities of Portugal, Indonesia, Southern India, and Malta. On top of that, a 900-year-old map based on even older maps from Turkey showed the coastline of South America down to Antarctica, which is on the opposite side of the planet as Turkey. It becomes not too unreasonable to suggest that Atlantis was once a worldwide seafaring culture and probably would have had a very high standard of living. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified of new videos, and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number 7. We know what Atlantis may have looked like. Standing at the entrance, jutting into the sky, were the pillars of Heracles. Past that, an island larger than Asia. Not exactly sure how that would fit in the middle of the Atlantic, but hey, it was a different time. 
Plato's maps and texts describe one giant city made of concentric moat rings followed by another ringed layer of decadent cities, each more spectacular than the last as you head towards the center island. Number six. It's almost uncanny how the odd conspiracy theorist usually has an opinion about Atlantis. Fortunately for us, some of these people are public figures. Apart from Kanye, celebrities usually don't think it's a good look to gossip on the fringe. But here's a short list of Atlantis admirers. Pete Carroll. This lovable Super Bowl winning NFL coach has received some critical attention for his, let's say, non-traditional views on 9-11. Now, I'm not saying that every conspiracy theorist also believes in ancient myths, but the two do seem to go together often. A popular LA radio host is friends with Carol from his USC coaching days. He claims Carol is very interested in rumors around Atlantis, but it's hard to get him to open up about it on camera. James Cameron. This Titanic director actually has a submarine capable of finding underwater cities. He's made an Atlantis joke or two, but also the odd remark that he really thinks that it might be out there. It's not at the top of his list of priorities to find, but still it's in the back of his mind whenever he's down in the ocean. So look out for Atlantis in the next James Cameron film. Maybe Leo's character from Titanic will make an appearance. Never let go. Edgar Casey. A whole video could be done on this mysterious American who was very famous in his time for psychic readings and healing people during the spiritualism craze. He still has a whole following, the Edgar Casey Society in Myrtle Beach. It's a bit of an obscure pick, but he's on our list because of how often he mentions Atlantis. There's a whole book written about him and the subject called Edgar Casey on Atlantis. You couldn't get five minutes into a conversation with the guy without him bringing up the missing city. Edgar believed that he was himself a reincarnated Atlantean. Furthermore, he thought that his Atlantean heritage was the source of his prediction powers, which sometimes were accurate. But the whole state of California would be underwater today if he was right about everything. So suck on that, Edgar. We're still standing. Looks like your Atlantean blood has let you down again. Number five. A theory that's beginning to gain popularity is that Atlantis was just one jewel from a global advanced civilization that built roads, intricate buildings, elaborate trade networks, and advanced militaries. It was said that the Atlanteans had a humongous central continent, and some researchers are now confident it was Antarctica. It was a really long time ago, but there used to be no ice covering the land of penguins. Articles have been trickling out about the interest certain companies and scientists have in the possibility of Antarctica having ancient Atlantean treasure below. Number four. There are a lot of interchangeable elements to the world's religions. Christians, Jews, and Muslims are all familiar with Noah and his ark. The similarities between Sumerian gods and those from many other traditions are striking. Throughout the world, we have decoded texts with pictures of sometimes fish-like gods that brought high technology to the people, allowing them to build great cities. The people live long and prosper, but at some point get too big for their britches, and then they're struck down by the wrath of the gods. To many, this sounds just like Atlantis, a city to reach the peak of civilization only to sink into the sea and never to be heard from again. It's true that dead men tell no tales when they're sleeping with the fishes, but their stone tablets do. Number three. The Spanish priesthood did an investigation around Central America and found some evidence that vestiges from an ancient time might remain. Some link their findings to an Atlantis connection to the Aztecs and the Aben Codex decoded by Diego Durant. This actually scared the priesthood because of the level of similarity it had to Sumerian myth. This decoding led to a few scholars to believe Azatlan and others are a remnant of humanity that survived a cataclysmic deluge with a few scrapes and bruises, but still some very impressive knowledge. 
Number two, we can all agree Atlantis is no longer here, but some have suggested that the reason for its disappearance is due to war with another country. Since it was so long ago, all we have are old documents. They hint at super advanced city-states that were at war. It was said that these city-states carried on for centuries peacefully, but eventually they became corrupt and greedy and began to squabble over power and territory. It's been posited that with great power came great destruction when some kind of nuclear level weapon was unleashed. It was similar to what would have happened if the US and Russia went over the brink during the Cold War. That's lights out, folks. Number one, in the early 2000s, National Geographic bought the rights to publicize author Paulina Zelitsky's discovery off the coast of Cuba. It was like pulling teeth to win Fidel Castro's approval to take her high-tech submarine into the area. Sonar imagery rendered by computers reveal an extensive system of roads and buildings, even pyramids that sit on the floor off Cuba. It was the biggest discovery unveiled for National Geographic. But suddenly, the project was mysteriously shelved without comment, and the structures remain unexplored. Thanks for watching, friends. Do you think that Atlantis existed? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and become a Badger buddy. See you next time.